brush knee push or brush knee and push or brush knee and twist step, all the same thing. The footwork for this is identical to parting the wild horse's mane, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time elaborating on that. Just as a quick review, in parting the wild horse's mane, we establish a bow stance, and then when we go from uh, one execution of the gesture to the other, we roll back, we do a 90 degree twist step, we pass through, establish the front foot forward, there's no weight on it, 50-50, I fix the back foot and finish my gesture. Okay, sit my quad, finish my gesture. So for the footwork of brush knee push, it's the exact same thing. It's just that we're coming from a different place because it's a different gesture. So in the brush knee push uh, execution, we roll back, we're gonna do a twist step, we're gonna look behind, chamber, brush, push, sit in the quad and finish the gesture, okay? So basically the footwork is the same. All right, uh, let's break this down in terms of hands first. Well, let me just do a quick review. From um, the common direction of the form, we would be in white crane over here. So we do three executions of this move. The first one is set up with these double blocks. Then we retract our front foot, look behind us, brush knee push. All right, so that's basically the first one. So what I want to do is I want to uh, break it down in details like this. The first thing I want to look at is the uh, hand motions. So you can kind of practice the hand motions in a Wu Qi uh, position. It's not going to be identical, but it's going to be close enough to get to the sensation of moving two hands in opposite directions at the same time. If I start off with my hands positioned over here, I like to use the term holding the tray. Kind of gives me a visualization of uh, that particular uh, thing that the waiters do for us. Now, from here, I'm going to drop this hand down. This would be my left hand, it would be opposite for you on the camera. This hand's going to come across my face. So I can stay in my Wu Qi, and I'm also going to rock back and forth because when I do exercises like this, I do like to feel like uh, bamboo in the wind. So here's what you need to be mindful of, is that your center's always leading the movement meaning that before you get to the end of your posture, you already start turning the opposite direction. You'll notice that my center is moving ahead of my hands. If you analyze one hand at a time, you can see that they're moving in circles opposite each other. So follow this hand and see how it goes up and then down and it turns because it's going to hold the tray over here. So I'm going to speed this up. So my right hand is going in a circle this way and my left hand is doing the exact same thing. If you watch this hand, it's also doing a circle. So without me rocking back and forth, basically what we're seeing is this. Right, hands going in opposite directions. Now when we do the brush knee push gesture, we break out of that and then we do a brush knee and push. All right, so that's basically what's going on with the hands. Uh, notice too that I follow my hand. When I look over here, I'm looking at my left hand in this case, and when I'm over here, I look at my right hand. When we go to do the brush knee push, you'll be looking behind you 180 degrees. All right, so, I'm going to do this um, in the uncommon direction only because if I do it in the correct or the common direction of the form, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing with my hands. So we're just going to buy into the fact that uh, I'll still do the gesture on the correct side, it's just I'm going to face the uncommon direction. That way you can see what's going on with my hands. All right, so I start with my white crane spreads wings, all my weights in my back foot. I begin this process by turning my center, I turn my center and then I cut my hand. Now when I make this block, it's with the knife edge. So I'm going to block with the knife edge of this hand and then I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to use my center to pull this hand down below, but my left hand is going to come across and same thing, I'm going to block with the knife edge. Pull back my left foot and I'm looking 180 degrees behind me. I see a lot of people putting their hands over here to the corner. That's lazy. 
We're looking for flexibility and balance in Tai Chi Chuan. So hit your parameters, look behind you. When I'm in this position here, you notice that my left hand is relaxed and my right hand is relaxed. I'm in a center step. Now, when I go to move, I'm going to move three things at once, uh, four things actually. In most Tai Chi Chuan gestures, you're moving two hands and a foot. This is one of the uh, exceptions where you're going to move four things at once, meaning that I'm going to take my step over the railroad tracks, toes straight ahead, and again, there's no weight in that foot. I'm testing the ice. While I'm moving this foot, I'm going to drop my left hand down to guard my right hip, and my right hand is going to come towards my ear, so there's two hands and a foot. But if I had a pie in my hand, I don't want to hit my face, so I'm going to look away and get what I call chambered. Now, this is where we store Jing. Um, just as a quick review, I'll just put it in hold there for a second. Jing is the uh, force that comes up before Qi. So if I take a bow and arrow, put the arrow on the uh, cradle here and have the string perfectly straight, there's no energy, there's no stored energy. But as I pull the string back, there starts to become a storing of energy. And when I'm ready to be fully extended and release, this Jing sends the arrow and now the arrow is moving at like Qi, all right? So when we're doing all of our gestures, we're always in a chamber position somewhere before we finish the gesture. So in this particular gesture, I'm in my uh, potential bow stance, my foot's straight ahead. This one's already in the corner because of the white crane spreads wings, all right? So my chamber, or storing of Jing, is now ready to be released. I'm gonna put this foot down, and once it touches the ground, my weight should be 50-50. What I'm gonna to do to finish is I'm gonna to continue to leave my hands with my center. I should square my hips. It's called sitting in your qua. Qua just means hip. You're gonna square your hips, sit in your qua, just before you form the gesture. All right, you'll notice that my hands were relaxed, and then I put a little tension in so that anybody who's watching can look at this and say, oh, that's brush knee push. All right, there'd be no confusion about that. All right, so taking this one more time. White crane spreads wings. I block with the right hand, and drop it down. Block with the left hand. I'm gonna pull my left foot back. I'm gonna hold this tray directly behind me, relax my wrists. When I chamber, notice that because my wrists are relaxed, this hand will flop over and this one continues to be floppy down here. You don't want to do this. I see this very common. Because your instincts think that there's more power in pushing like this, that's how a lot of students in the beginning stages execute this gesture. They think that that's stronger. That's actually weaker. They also go past 50-50. So they kind of lean. They think that that's going to send somebody far. It's just this. That's all I need to do is move just a few inches to send somebody far because I have a strong base, strong root. The other thing you want to be mindful of is that when you hit your 50-50, sit in your quad and form your gesture, you don't want your hands to go past your front foot. I know this is going to feel against your instincts. Everything's going to want to go out here. Think in terms of corkscrewing and rooting into the earth in your base so that when you have a strong base, you can have a, a strong upper body uh, position. So that's how the chi flows, right? It comes through the leg, it's redirected in the hip, square off the qua, and then manifests in its hand. This is a very important concept because if you uh, try to go too far forward, then you're gonna be actually weakening uh, your chi. Principle number three talks about uh, if you're losing power, then the defect is in the hips and the legs. So just a quick aside, just a reminder, I know we talked about that in a separate video, but um, if I'm standing, if I've got a bow stance, which is supposed to be like this, but I'm standing more on a, like a tightrope and have my gesture I'm struggling for my balance right now, okay? It's not obvious because I kind of can cheat and know how to root even here, but I'm still 
not anywhere near as solid as I will be if I'm in a good bow stance. So in principle number three, it talks about if you're noticing that you're struggling, loss of power, the reason I can say loss of balance is because when you're struggling for balance, you have no power. All of your power is now trying to figure out how do I get stability, which is why it's critical that when you take your stances, you walk on railroad tracks, you sit in your qua, all right, and finish the gesture. So that's how you make sure that you have the right uh, position when you're done with your movement. All right, so let's go through that one more time. I'm in a white crane spreads wings. You're gonna use your center to block with your knife edge of your right hand, drop it down, use your center to pull this hand, up, hand back. Look directly behind you. When you chamber, you move four things at once. Relax the wrists, test the ice. Nothing here, store your jing. Now, put the toes down, start to move. Square your hips and finish your gesture. That finishes the gesture, okay? So that's basically it as far as um, the first one goes. Now I'm gonna take it for a walk. Now when we take it for a walk, footwork's the same as part of the wild horse's mane, uh, except that we're gonna look behind. I'm gonna do it with a, a checkpoint first, and then we're gonna do it without the checkpoint. Meaning that for every step I take, I'm gonna take a center step and just make sure everything's in sync store my jing chamber and release. But then in the execution after that, we will remove that checkpoint. So starting from the very first one, there's three uh, executions of this gesture. It's kicked off with white crane spreads wings. So using my center first, because your center is always leading your hands and your feet. I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna look 180 degrees behind me, relax your wrist. Chamber, store the jing in the right leg, Release your jing, sit in the qua, brush knee, push, finish the gesture. That's the first one. The second one, we're gonna to have to make an adjustment twist step. That's why sometimes they call this brush knee and twist step. So from here, I'm going to twist 90 degrees and come to a center step. Again, this is a checkpoint. I'm not gonna stop when I really move all the way through this, but just to make sure that we're in this uh, position before we go, I wanna stop and, and do a check-in. Now, I'm going to chamber. So from here, I'm holding the tray. This is relaxed. I'm gonna take my step. There's no weight in this foot. I'm testing the ice. Center line's over here. Zen point's out there. I've got a relaxed wrist here. This is relaxed down by my hip. Also, be careful that it doesn't come out in front of you. Both these hands should be over each other and back here. All right, put the toes down. Move your center. When no toes hit the ground, you should be 50-50. This is another little checkpoint so that you know that you're ready to release this back foot. That being said, I'm going to use my center to pull that foot as it continues to guide my hands. I'm going to sit in my qua and then finish my gesture. One more time. I'm going to roll back, relax, flip my hands, relax my hands. Bring this up. I'm going to do a twist at 90 degrees towards the back wall. Checkpoint, relax wrists, hold the tray. Chamber, four things at once. Step over the rails, test the ice, make sure it's safe. Relax to the ear, this is down by my hip. Put my toes down when I hit 50-50. Pull the back foot, sit in the quad, and finish the gesture. All right, going all the way through nonstop. White crane spreads wings, block right. Drop it down, block left, pull the left foot back, hold the tray 180 degrees behind you, relax your wrist. Chamber, store the jing, release the jing, left foot hits, sit in the claw, form the gesture. Okay, roll back, relax the wrists, twist step. Look behind you, bring the right foot in, but don't stop. Go right to your chamber, don't go forward though. Keep back until you know the ice is safe. Fix the back foot, root it, Sit in the quad, form the gesture. Roll back, relax. 90 degree twist step. Hold the tray, pass through step. Brush knee push, root the back foot, sit in your quad, form your gesture. Okay? So when you're doing the footwork, if I uh, don't do my hands, you'll notice 
that my center turns this guy and then I chamber and this hits, that hits, and as soon as that hits, this comes along. So there's continuity down here. Finish my gesture, roll back. So I'm going to twist, pass through, toes down, root. Twist, pass through, toes down, root. All right, so let me just do this coming towards you so you can see it from a different angle. White crane spreads wings in the common direction. So I'm going to block with the right hand, knife edge, block with the right hand, turn the center the opposite way before you reach the end. Block with the left hand, knife edge, pull the left foot back, hold the tray 180 degrees behind you. Chamber, stay back. Brush knee push, no, nothing to fix here because it's already uh, in the corner because of the white crane. Relax the wrists. All right, twist step, pass through step, bring it in, send it out, move four things at once. Foot, two hands in your head, fix the back foot, sit in the quaff, form the gesture. Relax, roll back, twist step, look 180 degrees behind you. Pass through step, brush, push. Right, sit in the quad, form the gesture. 